Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to stabilize a shot using the Fusion node page in DaVinci Resolve 16. So as you can see, the shot is incredibly shaky, but we can make some improvements to it with some simple fixes. So for the stabilization we're talking about, we don't mean in the inspector the stabilization setting that's turned on here for every clip by default, um, but rather we're jumping over to the Fusion node page in order to add an effect to the clip. So when you're on this page, if it's not already open, you'll have to open up the nodes section, which should have media in and media out over here at the bottom. So between media in and media out, we're going to add a node between these two called a planar tracker. So I'm going to left click on media in, right click on the line, go to add tool, go down to tracking, and then we're going to choose planar tracker. So doing that, we'll already put the planar tracker node linked between media in and media out. So once we have the tracking done, we'll be able to stabilize based on that tracking. And to get our video tracking information, we're going to have to go to the inspector, which will be at the top right. So open that window if you don't have it open already. And you'll notice that the default operation mode for this tool is called track. So that's what we're going to need. And then once we've tracked and we got the video information, we can use that with the stabilize operation mode in order to make the shot a lot less shaky and more stable. So in order to do this, we're going to need to define an object or a region in our shot, which the tool can stabilize around. So basically, what should be the focus of the shot? In this case, obviously, it's going to be the ball in the center. And in order to target this ball area, we can't actually physically select it as a object on the screen. But what we can do is draw a region around it by using this pen tool. So I'm working in the media out node over here on the right. And if for some reason you don't see that, make sure media out node, you click on the right or the left side to make it pop open in the preview windows over here. And then click on the planner tracker node to make sure you get this toolbar. So in order to draw our region around this ball here, I'm going to use the click pen tool. Uh, basically, it would be called pen in another program. And we're just going to left click and add some points around our ball object. Um, now, right now, they don't need to be perfect, and you're not going to get a perfect circle, obviously, um, since these are linear points that go straight from one to another. But if we get our rough shape around the object, what we can do is hit Shift A to select all of the points, and then we can go up here to the Smooth tool or Shift S on the keyboard. And by doing that, um, it will basically take these points and curve them out to be much more like a circle. And uh, we can, of course, adjust the points a little bit if it's still off. And it doesn't need to be perfect as well. It just needs to roughly conform to the shape of what we're trying to track on the screen. So if we zoom out, we can see that this should be a pretty good selection. Uh, now, it would have been easiest if I had uh, made this selection on frame zero, because then we'd only need to track in one direction. But since I already added the tracker selection here on frame 68, what we can do is go to reference time and hit set. And uh, once we do that, the tracking will be starting from the frame of 68 and going in either direction that we want to track. So if you want to track to the beginning of the video, you can hit track to start like so. Okay, and when we do that, you can see that the movement of the ball across the shot gets tracked. So now we just need to go to frame 68 and do tracking in the other direction, track to end. And assuming you have a relatively simple shot, all of the points should be tracked quite smoothly here. And so if we play this video clip, we should see that this circle stays roughly aligned with the ball at all points in time. So this is working really nicely here, especially because no objects get in the way of the ball during the shot. So it's a really easy tracking situation. So now what we need to do is to take this tracking information and go over to the stabilize operation mode. So change it to stabilize, and we're going to hit compute stabilization, which will take that information we already created and uh, stabilize the video for us more or less automatically. So now we can go to frame zero and hit play to see how it looks. But one thing that you'll probably see is that due to the stabilization, the program will automatically rotate, scale, and pan your shot in order to make it focused on the object that we tracked in as less shaky of a way as possible. But as a result of that, you may see parts where edges of your video frame actually are kind of 
not filled in here at the sides, uh, which will become an issue, and we'll deal with that in just a second. But you can go ahead and hit play in order to go through your video and see how it looks as is. And we should be able to see that the shot itself is a lot shakier than it was before. Uh, but obviously right here, especially at the ending frames, we can see these problems where a large section of the left side is just not having any video information there because of panning to the right. And if you want to go ahead and compare the stabilized shot to the original, uh, we can go ahead and copy the media out. So control C and then control V in the node section and then just feed the media into the media out there and put the media out on the left panel. So you can take one look at that as is with the original shot on the left and the stabilized shot on the right. So you should be able to see the jankiness in your original shot as long as it was there to begin with. But then overall the shot does look smoother here, but we do get those edge issues. So you're really going to have two options here in order to solve those edge issues where there's no video information. So you can change the frame mode from uh, full to either crop or zoom. So what cropping mode will do is basically take a box from the center area of your shot, um, cut that away where all the remaining video information is just kind of eliminated, and then scale that until it is big enough to fill the frame completely. So by having Resolve automatically select a box here um, from the areas where you can't see any of the rotations that are being made in the background and scaling that up, uh, you'll get a good looking shot. There's also Zoom, which is similar. It doesn't cut away any of the parts. So the video information would still technically be there while you're editing your video, though it won't show up in the final frame. Um, but rather than making any cuts, it just zooms in so that anything else would just go to the outer edges. And then you would only see the zoomed in part. So in effect, they pretty much work kind of the same. It's just that one removes the video information and then the zoom uh, just zooms into the parts which are usable. So for either of these two modes, there is a auto crop function. Uh, when you use auto crop or auto zoom, it's only going to affect the scale and it will just automatically move the scale to where it needs to be so that these edge areas never show up in the final output clip. So if I hit auto crop, then resolve determines that it needs to be zoomed in about 12% there and make sure that those blank areas never actually show in the video clip. Likewise, the same thing would happen with auto zoom. Um, now there's an alternative to doing that, which of course is to manually set your scale and your X offset and your Y offset. So when you auto zoom or auto crop, it's making the assumption that you're keeping the shot in the center still. Uh, so you might be able to need less of a zoom than like 1.112. If you were to say manually pan the shot to the left or the right um, by playing with the X offset. So it's kind of up to you if you want to manually do that or just auto zoom. And it may be possible to get the results you're looking for with scaling the shot less if you adjust the X and Y offset so that it's centered as well as it can be. And so if you manually do it, you may need to zoom in the shot a little bit less with the scale function if you get the X offset and the Y offset just right. So in this case, we can crop because we might not care about any of the extra video information that is outside of the bounds of this final frame. It just becomes unnecessary information at this point. Okay, so once you have this node set up and your settings are all good, you can close the other windows and just preview them side by side and make sure that everything looks good. So let's go to frame zero and hit play. Hopefully you should notice a dramatic improvement in the shakiness of your shot on the right. Note, of course, you may see a little bit of weirdness going on in your shot, like some warping right there, depending on how shaky your original shot was. So while this stabilization is very easy to use and quite powerful, it doesn't necessarily fix a shot that was originally really terrible to begin with. So the less you need to rely on this tool, the better your final shot is going to look anyway. But hopefully this video has helped you guys to get an idea of how you can stabilize your shot using DaVinci Resolve and get some improvements there. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.